This application is the Realty CRM uh, ins and inspection actions database. database. Now, this now application, this application is, designed is designed for realtors, realtors and inspection, inspection companies, companies, or both, where you have a realtor that has a inspection uh, organization within the, their own company. Uh, what is the inspection? The inspection is where, when you have a property that is either being managed and people are moving in and out and you're going ahead and inspecting the property, or you have buyers and sellers where you have an activity where the seller is selling the uh, dwelling and you have to do an inspection for the new buyer to ensure that the property is properly uh, organized and set up. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first screen that is uh, having the activity that we're looking at. When you open the application, you're going to be opening to a advanced calendar. And what is that? An advanced calendar allows you to set up users. And in this case, I'm going to go down here and I'll show you that there's an administrator, which is the uh, developer. And in this case, I put Joe Realtor in there. I'm going to show you how to change that. But basically what happens, you can add one or more users into the application to allow you to manage the information that you're using or doing in the application as far as people that would log in. Now, this can either be a single user, like the iOS app that you're using when you buy it on iTunes, or you buy the application outright as a application that works in a free product called FileMaker Go, or you can have the application set up for the Macintosh or Windows or as a cloud user. Now understand that the iOS version only works as a single user on the application within the iPad or iPhone. This is a universal app, so it is available for both the iPhone and iPad. Now when you open up the application, use finger gestures to either move around the screen or zoom in and allow you to do things in detail in whatever area you're, you're moving in. If you have an area on the screen, and I'm going to show you this later, where you have a multi-line portal similar to this, and you need to move around, uh, now this screen will move no problem, but if you're in a regular uh, portal, which we're going to show you in one of the next parts of this video, you use the up and down so you can move it up and down the screen, but you do not have to worry about uh, the, the application as far as hanging up in a certain area. So you would use this to move around. So let's go ahead and explain what this calendar does. This is an advanced calendar. What does that mean? It has the ability to show you day transactions, weekly transactions, monthly transactions, and full years or a list of transactions. In this particular case, these are things that are being closed and you can see that they have a line drawn through them, which means that those have already been uh, completed. Now, if you want to go back, I just put some in there as, as far as having something that you can see as samples. But what you would do is go to the actual date for these, like these go back in 2012. They're showed up as, as bogus records. What I mean by that is I just added them for uh, purposes of examples. But what you would do is you would go ahead and click in this or click on the actual information here and it would open up that particular sub record so you could read the information in there. Uh, let's go back to the main calendar and go back to the date. And what I'm going to do is show you the little pieces of how this calendar works. If you want to move up a date or back a date, you use these two arrows here or you click the center button to go to the current date that you're looking at for that particular date within the actual calendar. In this case, I've moved back where I had a record so I can show you how the records actually appear on the screen. And then I'm going to show you how you can actually edit the records if you have an issue with them where they passed the actual appointment date and they were not completed like they were supposed to. That would be in this area over here. You can either click here at the arrow here or you can click on the item right here and it will open up the screen so you can edit that record in that row. There's an area over here where you can delete a record row, but I suggest because this is kind of a business situation that you do not delete records because you need those as information to go back and restore your information or and or look up prior things that you've done and how you completed those items. Uh, if you completed the actual record, you can click here and what it does, it draws a line through the items that are completed. If you unclick it, it'll go back so you can read the information here. The date is shown for the actual activity of this record, when it starts and when it's uh, due, and I'll show you how you actually edit those records shortly. 
Now, down in the calendar down here, because I'm showing it on the simulator for the uh, Xcode, what it does is it causes the line that is supposed to go all the way across to not go all the way across. It just looks like a little black lump underneath the number. On the Mac, Windows, and other usage, there will be a line all the way underneath here like we showed up on the top up here. But those are the items. Now, the current date is the 3rd. The 29th is the last record that was entered. So blue indicates the record that you're actually viewing, and the actual date for the current date is in green. And when you go through, like I said, if you see a little black lump there, those are things that have actual records within the calendar area and calendar dates. Now, we said you can show the list, the month or year or week to find the activity that's actually going on because you'll actually see the record in them. So, for example, if I go to week, you're going to see it up here. You can also use these to add new records by clicking here, or you can click this to go to the actual record that you're viewing within that area. So there's ways to navigate, and that is true of the weekly. And when I'm in the weekly, you'll see that it's got the atom, that little item down here at the bottom that shows the actual activity for that particular date that you're viewing. If you click over here and there's another one listed over here, it'll change this to that date that's current for that particular date that you highlighted. So it's easy to move around. You can also access the uh, secondary record, the sub record, by clicking here or clicking here or you can add a new daily record and that should take you to the daily record to add it when you go to do that. And it has a simulation, the same thing that's on the daily over here where you can uh, edit the record. Now say for example you want to add a new user so that it shows up in the list here. You can have as many users as you want and when you highlight them what will happen when I highlight this one, it'll make the data that is not for that particular time or that particular uh, user disappear. You won't see it. So you'll see other information like this is an old record that was not completed. So you can see that there's a record that was hanging out there for Joe Realtor in his record. Down here at the bottom of the screen I want to show this is universal all the way across the application. If you're moving between fields on a screen you can click Previous, Next, or you can go to the top record. You can click this to copy a field that you're looking at. Or as you add data, of course, just like the iPhone does and iPad does, it'll show you data down here at the bottom that you can select and tap on to add it into the field as the next word being used. Over here, you have an additional thing where you have a bold, italic, and underlined. And that allows you, if you're in a field, to change the way the appearance of the text is in that particular field that you're working on. Now, I want to point out that you do not, do not use the plus and minus here that is shown in this screen. That deletes a record and this one adds a record. In this application there are options for you to have the, the things within the application. There's a do action button like the similar ones up here that are going to be used in order to add, delete, and it only add records where you can see where it says new record within the application on the screen you're viewing. If you don't see where it says new record, do not use these buttons down here or never use these down here. When you get done using this area down here, you would click done and it would go down and you can hide this area by doing the down arrow. I want to point out in here also, if you click on this, you'll see that there, it says, it says that there's 53 records omitted. You can navigate backwards and forwards by clicking these arrows and you'll show that it shows the current record is one record in the found set and there's 54 total records. One of one actually is showing. These are administrative records that are hidden from view and you won't be seeing those. If I highlight this and move between the records, it'll allow me to navigate to that record. Depending on which screen you're in, if you've done a find where you're looking for data, you can uh, tap on show all or show omitted or omit a record and that'll actually function. When they're in gray, it's telling you that it's not in a proper area that you're highlighting to be able to omit a record or show omitted or show all. We'll talk lo lots more about that in pr uh, prior or next videos. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what I was talking about. If you want to add a new user, you would go over here to Users and click on that. You'll see it says Joe Realtor here. If you click on the arrow at the end of the row, you can go up here and you can change Joe Realtor to whatever you want. And then you can add down here the login ID as far as the login name. And then when you go to close the record after you've edited this, and right now this is set up for system administrator, this would be the boss, so to speak. So you can add uh, information. If you have people that are just users and they shouldn't have the ability to add 
uh, additional record information as far as uh, new records for users, then you would be a user in this thing instead of an administrator. Uh, when it comes to a password, when you go to close the record, when you say close, it's going to ask you to put in a uh, user password. And in this case, the record was already created, so you would not be putting in the uh, a record for a password at this time. But if you added a new uh, person, like if you come up here and hit this plus button, it'll add a new user. When you add a new user, you would edit all the information I just showed you, and you'd make sure that you have active over here. If for whatever, if you had a person that, say, for example, was no longer to be using the application, now don't get rid of Joe because that's important. That's the only system administrator. And what you would do is you would just click the red button over here, and it would delete that one user. Okay, multi-language. Do not change anything in the screen at all. This is for developer only modification and setup of the application for the calendar. Let's go back to the calendar itself and go back to the day, date calendar and the day. Now let's go ahead and take a look at going back to the 29th when we had data in the screen. Uh, first of all, we have to go back out of this calendar so we can go back to the administrator because there's no records in the Joe calendar right now. So we'd navigate back and you notice that if this is for the 29th, we came back to the record where we were at. Like I said, if you had an item that was in this area and you didn't show it as complete like this, you'll notice that this will disappear as no longer expired. You either reschedule it or and or you did complete it and it will not show up over in this area as a missed appointment. Now let's talk a little about why you have appointments. In the business of being a realtor or an inspection or whatever, you could add certain things up here in the user bracket that would say that you would have, say for example, inspections, and maybe you'd have a, a showing or everything like etc. that you'd have in here. You could add those as users and create individual calendars that would be set up for that actual date or time. Say for example, if you wanted to see during the month and you wanted to see all the activity, for the, an individual or say one person where just their stuff would show up or inspector or inspections would show up, then that area would be in there. Now you can add whatever calendars you want with usernames and passwords. And that way when you sign in, you could go to that particular thing or you could do, say, go to your record. And I'm going to show you here in a second. We're going to go back to the daily calendar. And I'm actually going to go in like I created a record. If I want to click over here, and I'm not going to do that because I already have it set up for one example record, you click this, and what it would do is it would start to add information by popping up a screen, and it would pop up this screen. Now, in this screen, what you're doing is you're adding the title for the block you saw on the last screen. In this case, I put test record. Now, you can edit this record if you want to. What you would do is back sweep it and put in your information that you want in here. You need to consider, because of the small area on the actual calendar, to keep the data that's going in here so that the information that's most important is to your left. You can add as much data as you want, but you should have just the information that you want that's important on the left-hand side. When you're adding a record in here, one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to tell us what it is. Is it an action item? something you're going to do a call back on somebody. This is you're working with the escrow company or inspection or you're doing a listing or a meeting, paperwork, reminders, sales, or in this case showing property. Now you have all these different things that have different icons for to allow you to show that on the calendar so it's obvious when you're looking at the calendar what the icon is for it. In this case I'm showing property so I would have a thing, a little loudspeaker in there because I'm doing something where I'm telling something to somebody. Next thing, there's a priority. This would be the top priority, intermediate priority, and low priority. If you click on those, these will actually show up in the actual calendar so you can see if they're high priority or not. The next thing is setting up a date. There's a drop-down calendar that will pop up where you can actually put the start date of an activity and you can have a single day. If you have a single day, this information would be the same on both fields. If it's going to be over a span of time, two, three days, say like for example, it's doing an inspection, you could go ahead and add a different date down here that would be the end date. And over here, if there's a start and an end time for that, like it starts on AM uh, 8 o'clock and then it ends at say 11 o'clock on the last date, then that would go in there. Estimated hours, you could put that in there if you're doing an inspection and you, the total amount of hours that should be used would be, say, for example, 
eight hours, for example. You would put the eight in there and we'll talk about how that is actually shown in a slide graph on the page. When you add that, it'll actually put how much you've actually completed based on the information you add. Over here also, there's a little plus thing that you can click to add a new field in this area and you have different things that you can add in here, for example. As a realtor, it's kind of important to understand your clients if they have a birthday, an anniversary, or other things that are important that you want to notify them about or send them a card and stuff like that. It's just good salesmanship to know a lot of things about your client. Hence the CRM, Customer Relationship Management, where you're taking in information and you're putting it in your database so you can use it later. In this case, there may be an inspection that's due or escrow start or close, an inspection start or done, or you can edit the list to add new items. And you can also put a little comment on this side, or you can just clear the row by clearing this. Down here on the bottom, when you're looking at the actual title for this, it is related to a client or an activity. In this particular case, even the activity is related to a client. For example, if we're doing an inspection and we need to have the person for the inspection in the record so we know who it is, we would come down here and I only have four clients in here that I made up except for myself. And I made up these so that we could use them as examples in the actual database. You can overwrite these and I'm going to show you how to do that later. But basically, if you click on another one, it's going to change it. And it's also going to change this over here. Now, I don't suggest you edit these, but you can add data in here that will actually show up on the back end of the application where we're going to be going when we finish these videos. Then there's an birthday anniversary and an inspection date that is pertinent to this particular record. In this case, if it said up here that there was an inspection, we'd want to put in the inspection date. Over here, what kind of a client is this client? Is he an agent, a buyer, an escrow company, contractor, vendor, whatever? Or you can edit this edit list, list by adding like add other, people other people or other, other things that you want to add to the list. Then you have the contact date, basically for this particular uh, client in whole. In other words, the first time you made contact with this client, this is the contact date that shows up in the back end of the application. Now, I keep talking about things like birthday and anniversary that are important and the name of the person. This could be for whatever person or people that are, are important to you as far as the records are concerned. What you do is if you add any kind of a date in a portal, and we talked about a portal, in a portal, if you add date, it will create another new record below it as you add that information. So it's well worth knowing that that's how you add an additional record. So if I clicked here and try to add a record, it's not going to allow me to do that. The same thing goes if you want to zoom in, as you can see I just did there. You could zoom in using finger gestures so you would have ability to access that particular portal. And one of the things I was talking about sliding around portals, you can get in a white area on either side of this, and when you pull it up and down here, it pulls up and down the screen. But if you try to pull here, and of course it has to be data all the way through it, it will scroll the portal, but it won't scroll the screen. So having the area on the other side in an area where there's a portal is important to know you have to scroll it outside of the portal or within the portal to scroll the portal. To zoom back in again so you can see things uh, on the record, then you would go ahead and set up the uh, screen so you can see it. Now, we're, we covered just about everything. There is a delete button for a row in this screen. This is if you were adding something and you had not completed it, and then all of a sudden you find out that that particular record is not going to happen. You can always delete it from within the screen from here and delete that particular row item that is in the that date screen for that day. Uh, over here, now these are important. These are actually coming from what we call the back end of the application. If you tap on this in an iPad or iPhone or in a device like a desktop, it'll bring up this screen. This is the guy that is actually the record we're viewing. What is he? Is he a buyer, an agent, and so forth? You would go ahead and indicate that so that it goes into the back and into the application. Now, let me warn you, you do not add a new client in this screen. I'm being very objective about this. You have to go to the back end of the application to add a new user. But if you have current people added in the back end, you can select them in here and then go ahead and get the information for them. There's no way to navigate to the back end of the application from this screen. You actually have to use the menus at the top of the screen. If you want to close this particular information that you're looking at, you 
click back on in an area, either a white area or on a button, and it'll hide that information that's on your screen area. This is true throughout the application. Now, what is a related contact? A related contract means there's a primary person, which is this person. In this case, it's Bill Holland. I'm going to actually change to show you something here. I want to go back up and pick myself because the data I have in here is complete. There's all the things we want to look for. So if I show you that I'm a seller and I'm not a buyer, I'm selling a, uh, a dwelling or a real estate uh, property, could be a lot or whatever. And this is the date that I first contacted the company or you are the person that's running this application, that would be the first day you made a contact with me, the client. I would have my information here and a date of an inspection if there's going to be an inspection. In this particular case, I'm a seller, so there's bound to be something we're going to do for an inspection if we sell the property. And you'll see when I open this, I even have a picture here. Now you can tap on this and you can either replace it or delete it. And in certain places on an iPad or I, uh, iPhone, you can actually click on this and there'll be a thing that says view and it'll blow it up to the full size of the image. It's pretty nice. Now when you're actually in here, you can edit, you can do finds. If I hold the icon down, I can do select, select all paste and all the things you would normally expect to do on an iPad or an iPhone. Uh, information in here can be edited from this screen and this is actually in the back end of the application. So what you're doing is you can do updates on the fly or you can use this area to contact somebody if you're in the calendar and you need information uh, specific to that particular client. So you see all the things like the address and telephone numbers and emails and all that kind of stuff right from here. And at the very top, you have the latest status and this is actually locked in here until you click on it. And then it comes up and you get to see all the things that are in here. And if I scroll, there's quite a bit of different things in here that is the latest status to date about this client. So for example, I'm a new client, so they're going to need to write a listing. And of course, you can see all the other things that are in here that are related to what that client might be doing. And you can still edit this list to add more stuff to it. For example, present an offer, sign an offer, and so forth. These are very important things that you have that, as a realtor that you need to do. Uh, you have a place for the spouse's employer, spouse's work phone, and so forth. So there's a lot of information. And then everything that's beyond that, now this is property information, but there's notes that you can put down in this area that will show up on the back end of the application in this client's record. Or you can edit current data that's in there and modify it to fit whatever the information is that you need to have. Okay, let's go ahead and click back out in the area and hide that. Down at the bottom of the screen, these are tasks that you want to do that are related to this particular record. For example, in this case, if I click on the plus here, it gives me the ability. It puts a date and time. It says that admin created this. And now I can go ahead and add information over here and type in some information. And I have an area here down at the bottom that uh, if I wanted to, I could add additional notes. Like if I go up here and the note area, and I can add a note in here that is related to just this particular task that we're doing right here. In the same way, I also have a subtask. And what the subtask is, if I'm assigning something to somebody else to do something, I would click this. And what it would do is it would open up information for creating a task and a note for that particular individual task. And when I'm done with that, I can click out of it. And now I can also uh, give a description over here of that particular task. Okay, in this case, every time you add a task, it's going to put a number here. So you can see that there's a number of tasks on the tab that show that there are things that need to be done or will be done. In this case, I need to go back and pick myself so that I have the information in there. And that's related to the information that's in here. Now, uh, I'm just going to recap a little bit. So that now that I've created a subtask, I have a subtask that's showing I can go back to the record test and it'll come back to the record text. So now you see that we have information that's down here that's related to the current activity that's going on in, the, in this area. Now, one of the things that I need to show you here is as you add new users, those user names will, whatever you put in there in the user file, will add an area here. We have all this area in here to add users. And in this particular case, it's struck for the administrator. And if I click in this, now that calendar will also show it in Joe Realtor. The reason for that is, is that Joe Realtor has some activity or something that he's supposed to be doing. And maybe the notes and all the descriptions and everything down here are related to Joe User. 
so that you have to have the uh, assignment for him for whatever the task is. Now in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and move out of here and I'm going to go back and by closing this, I'm going to be closing this screen so that there will not be a uh, any more information that we have to do here. So I'm going to close that and I'm coming back out to this screen and you'll see that it stayed the same. The date, in this case I didn't put any times in there so the times are blank. If I put a date and a date and a time and a time, I can start an end time for a particular date that will show. So we have the priority, we have the person that put it in, and every new record will get a new number and it will tell how many to use. And like I said, if you want to re-enter the record, either click here or click here. Now, down at the bottom, it has a profile. That's something you do not change. You have preferences. You do not need to change those. And if you were logged in as one person and you wanted to log in as another, you could say re-log in. And what it's going to do, it's going to come up with a dialog that says log in again. And you can move from one user to another on the screen. Say, for example, I wanted to be able to see the Joe Realtor. I could log in as Joe Realtor if I needed to. In this case, we're going to go over to Joe Realtor, and now I'm going to show you that Joe Realtor now has two items in here. One that we have an old record that was not concluded, and we have the one we were just working on. So you can see that that's the way to work. Now, if I click up here, you'll see the keyboard comes up and allows you to do what you have to do as far as managing. Do not use continue. That is only if you have scripted information, and that is all handled for you, so you do not have to modify this. Uh, under new releases of the uh, iOS, you may get things like now they have these guys in here. I don't recommend we use any of these because they're not appropriate for this application. But all the things that uh, the little tabs and tags and all that stuff you might want to put in there, it's not really appropriate for this, uh, this user. Okay, uh, if you have questions or need assistance, you can always contact us by clicking on the uh, button that is in the do action button which is shown on the next set of screens and you can go directly to uh, the, the support site if you need help. Now recall, uh, if you read the information on the detail when you purchase this application, all tech support is free. You can use our website to chat or you can go uh, and write us an email and contact us that way and you can do that within the chat also. Uh, one last thing I want to cover before we leave this screen is down here if you want to turn off the little lines that show in the calendar you can go ahead and click this and it'll not now show that they're not there anymore. If you click it, it'll return the little line that's underneath it here. Okay, if you, like I said, if you have any questions, go ahead and contact us through our website. Thank you.